What's up guys, GG Forex here. Welcome back to my Forex challenge series. Now it is Monday, it is 20 past eight in the morning. I have one trade on from last week, which is EN. Um, I am currently have a pending on another one on EN, one on USD CAD, one on GJ, and one on GN, right? So there is a lot of news coming out tomorrow so tuesday wednesday so we've got fmoc on wednesday we've got a lot of um interest rates for the pound on thursday so let me just show you quickly it's a lot of it is kicking off pretty soon i've already warned the guys in the gg forex group so tuesday we've got uh usd ppi data coming out um and wednesday we've got cpi data for pound FMOC, um, obviously for USD, um, and GDP for NZD as well. So that's a massive day Wednesday. AD, you got unemployment change. Um, but yeah, it, it is mental what's kicking off. So Wednesday, Thursday is going to be a bit crazy. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I'll say, is going to be a bit crazy on prices. Um, so yeah, I am looking forward to what price is going to do in these areas i am selling in logical areas i have got a pendant on usd cad but only half a percent um one because if i zoom out a little bit um <clears throat> price is in my logical area it has taken liquidity it has shown weaknesses to the downside so it has done everything i wanted to do the only thing it hasn't really done is give me some nice targets down here and the fact that this wasn't really like a massive liquidity grab, but it still did what I wanted it to do. We still have massive bearish divergence in this area. So you can see price has been pushing up from here and all the way up is all been selling off as they go, just getting a better price along the way. Um, <clears throat> so I am expecting a price reversal, but it will be playing around in this area for quite a while because obviously this is an eight hour entry. Um, reason being is because this is where they bought the cells. This is where they push price up from here, from this eight hour candle. But I do believe it could fill this. Um, but again, I don't know 100%, so I've played it safe. Uh, I feel like it could fill into this area here. I should make it white. I feel like it could fill that area and then come down. But I am expecting some sort of reversal pattern here. If I do get that, then possibly another re entry could be on the cards for half a percent bringing this trade up to the total of 1% risk. Um, oh, sorry, I'm tired. Um, but yeah, I am expecting with that data that price could, I'm expecting with that data that price could come down, liquidate this trend line liquidity and take out these equal lows, fill this imbalance down here. Um, but again, this is like 400 pips, so it could take a while, but it has done it here previously. So it is fully capable of selling off massively in this area in a, like a two week period, which is fine because obviously I've only got two four weeks left to trade in before really the end of the year to um, try and get my 10% or just get a pass for another free retake um, for the start of next year. Uh, so let's have a look at EN, what I'm at at the moment. EN is compressing in my entry zone. Let me just zoom in a sec. So I'm already in on EN at the moment, there's a mark execution on EN um, here with this trade, if you can see it, and I have a pending up here. This is where I think price, they made a descending trend line, so I feel like they might liquidate this during London session or tomorrow. Um, it is like 42-ish uh, pips away from triggering in. So I have a London session or New York session, this could liquidate these highs, taking out the early sellers and then triggering me in and then pushing down again massive amount of bearish divergence in a logical area has left targets all along the way um, to the downside and on a higher time frame we do have this nice set of equal lows down here and we have sold off massively from this area before this area of supply have a look down retracement down retracement i'm expecting another down on Euro NZD. Okay, right, so let's go on to GN, what I'm seeing. GN is probably the nicest looking trade I've seen 
obviously we have higher time frame equal lows which is beautiful it has come down sold off come down made targets and now we're in this area again and it has made some nice divergence it's liquidated the highs we're selling in the premium area it's made really nice targets on the lower time frames as well as you can see here it has broken the swing low it's got targets down below and again nice set of divergence at the same time as price is coming up so yeah this is what i'm looking at but we'll have to see what price does by new york open but so far so good i'll keep you guys updated um i am getting this sell off now eventually it is at like break even of the drawdown still a little bit in drawdown but not much um gn is approaching my area um nicely nothing too worrying about its price action at all um and yeah so that is something that might happen this afternoon maybe tomorrow but what i have done is i have gone into uh ej why it's because it makes sense like the liquidity has gone down i know i'm buying and selling the euro but it's against the yen not nzd um but it is shown an accumulation. It has pushed price up. It has liquidated the lows again. So everything for me to confirm a buy has happened. So even though I'm still bearish on most euro pairs on the EJ, I have to take this trade. Why? Because I was watching again Mark Douglas, right? And I've probably rewatched those four parts on YouTube for about maybe five times now. It's about four hours of viewing and I've watched it probably about five times. And what he says was, you don't know the outcome of any trade. You just have to follow your edge. If your edge says to buy or sell, then you are obligated to take that buy or sell. And how I've sort of interpreted that was, I agree with that, but if there's any worries about that, lower the risk so for me i've only gone on half a percent right rather than one percent on this trade and if it breaks that high and closes there's still plenty more room for price to go higher on ej then i can look for another entry but with better confirmations stronger confirmations now it's broken and closed above that high after it's already taken me out of profit that i could risk one percent then and then look for another re-entry um, but yeah, for where it is now, where price is now, for all my confirmations that I like to have, it makes sense to get in for a buy on EJ in this area. But yeah, Mark Douglas, if it makes sense to you, if it fits your edge, your strategy, your edge, you're obligated to take that trade. Because again, you don't know the outcome. You don't know what it's going to do. I don't move the markets. Other people do. So it makes sense for me to take this trade, so I am taking this trade, if that makes sense. But yeah, so that's where I am at the moment, sitting on my hands for a while now, and probably by New York Open at one o'clock, or half past 12-ish, we should be able to see what price is actually doing, um, and then we'll get some nice closes, but yeah. So the four hour candle has just closed now at 10 o'clock. Yeah, we'll see, I'll keep you guys updated. I just wanna make it like a, a point, guys, like, what I found about trading is, with a funded challenge, not just a challenge, but a funded account, you may see a bunch of opportunities that fit your criteria, that fit your edge, you know? You're like, okay, this is my edge, I am I am obligated to take this trade, I don't control the outcome, whatever happens, happens. Like, that's how you should trade. The probabilities are in your favor. What makes sense to you makes sense, and you trade accordingly to, to the, your plan and your edge, right? But when it comes to a challenge or a funded account, you can't take all those trades. You have to pick and choose. And sometimes when you pick and choose, the ones you don't pick win and the ones you do pick lose. And then you might think, oh, I'm making the bad decisions. But at the end of the day, it's a numbers game. It's a probability game. So you're not gonna be right all the time. You might have a losing streak, but if you were able, let's say you're on a personal account and you were able to take all those trades, and you have, I don't know, let's just say a 30% win rate or 40% win rate, regarding whatever your um, reward to risk is, you're probably guaranteed that you're gonna make money at the end of it, but you can't trade like that in a funded environment. 
which is the, the most frustrating thing about a funded environment is you can't just take all the trades that meet your criteria and knowing at the end of it over a series of trades not a trade by trade basis but over a series of trades you're going to end up profitable but you just can't do that on a funded account and that's what i'm finding the most frustrating <laughs> is i know my edge works I can't choose which trades out of those trades will work and when, but I know over a series of those trades, I am profitable. But I just can't do that on a funded account. And that's what's really annoying. But so far, I am 28 pips away from GN triggering. I am 40 pips away from my new EN trade triggering. And I'm in profit on Euro Yen at the moment. GU, already mentioned this in the GG Forex group, that I wanted to take has triggered and is in profit, but I didn't take it because there was too much risk on the table. That's what I mean by pick and choose, right? So I chose EJ over GU, right? And GU is technically working out better than my, if I delete this, this is a potential re-entry, but this is potentially working out better than my EJ trade. And I'm like, oh, why couldn't I have picked this one instead? Well. You can't choose which ones you get in and which ones you can't. Well, you can, but you can't choose which ones perform better. You just, it meets your criteria, take the trade. But again, you don't control the outcome. You don't control what one wins, what one doesn't. You just have to make a decision there and then. It's either going to win or it's not. It doesn't mean that you're a bad trader. It just means the outcome didn't play out in your favor for that trade, but over a series it did. Let me know in the comment box if that makes any sense at all. I'm sure it does to people who know how about know about trading but when you're limited and what you can actually take trades on it's very frustrating when the ones you don't choose win and the ones you do choose lose doesn't mean you're bad it just means that's how it came out that makes sense okay guys so i've now been triggered in on both uh ens um gn i went in on usd cad <clears throat> as well because it made sense for me at, when i made the new um, pattern, but still risky. I think it's going to come up to the daily time frame and then start to sell off. And obviously EJ as well. So really, there's nothing more I can do now. It's basically sit on my hands, waiting for price action to take place. Um, it's going to do what it's going to do. I can't really force it. I'm not going to stare at the charts. I'm just going to let it play out. Um, we do have big news tomorrow. Obviously today was bank. The UK banks, what do they call it? Bank stress test results. So whatever that is, I have no idea. If you guys know, just let me know in the comment box below. But yeah, that's the only news happening today. Um, and tomorrow we have got um, USD news with PPI. And the day after, that is when we got FMOC. So that's when we're gonna see some really spicy price action and a lot of people are gonna get taken out. But so far, those positions that I'm in look good. I just need to wait and see what happens. But yeah, you guys will find out tomorrow whether they work or not. And if they do, then likelihood is I'm gonna pass the challenge even if they only go like halfway towards my position, which is nice. Um, but yeah, so guys, if you like this video so far, like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.